What up, you guys? We are here for our weekly energy oracle forecast. I hope y'all are doing well. We're just taking a look at the week ahead to see what kind of spiritual weather we will be having for the next seven or eight days. What kind of energy and mood we'll be in. Ooh, love. This is great. So I feel like... You know how a map lady, uh, when you go the wrong way, when you turn, when you missed your turn or when you turned wrong, she's like recalculating. I feel like right now, collectively, we are recalculating and we are, it's like our soul map lady is working out like a route that is going to be the most beautiful scenic route full of love, full of joy, full of excitement, full of inspiration. And that's what we're doing with our life right now. We are designing our next chapter, the next leg of our journey, the next half of our life from a place of love. What lights us up? What do we love doing? What makes us curious and excited and full of life and motivated? Down to like, you know, I mean, things that are mundane, we take for granted to the things that are, you know, most important, like what fills us with love and with joy and what makes us feel like we're overflowing. And so when we move through our day and we're making these, all of these decisions, you know, and these decisions are sometimes huge and they're sometimes small and they're sometimes medium and the important thing that we need to do is really start <clears throat> living our lives from a heart-centered place. And that sounds so lofty. It's like, what does that even mean? And it means when you have choices, choose the thing that fills you with love. If you're in a parking lot and you're like, there's a spot over there next to, I don't know, some trash or there's a spot over there next to a beautiful tree. It's like park by the tree, like everything. Like don't take it for granted. Like follow your heart where it leads you to the things that feel, fill you with beauty and with value and with love. Don't like nothing is too small to, to consider. And of course the big things in life. And it, it's so much, it's so funny because it's the small things that we usually lean into the love right? Oh, I want to park over there by that. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, this feels good. Oh, that tastes great. But like our big life choices, like where are we going to go to work every day and spend eight hours of our day and our energy every single day of our lives, living our lives? Like how many of us have spent years of our lives working somewhere that we hated, right? Now, there will always be variables about the place that you work or the profession that you choose that Liz Gilbert, the writer um, slash creative um, genius, calls the shit sandwiches. Like everything, every dream that you have comes with a shit sandwich. So it's best to look at the shit sandwiches and figure out which sa shit sandwich do you not mind the least. <laughs> because no matter how much you love something and no matter how great anything is, every single thing in life is going to come with a shit sandwich. And so consider the shit sandwich you don't mind continuing to eat, right? <clears throat> so we want to like make those big life choices in a way that fills us with love and and opens our heart up and, and fills us with joy you know I, I there's I really like the place that I work and I like it for so many different reasons because it's all these like micro reasons that the answer to those reasons are I love it I love the route that I drive to work every day I love the street that I go down. I love the houses that I pass and the businesses that I pass and the trees that change throughout the year. It's a beautiful route. It's an easy, fun route to work. I love that. I love that there are convenient, pleasant parking spaces in front of historical homes. And the short walk into work is like, I don't know, it's pleasurable. I like to walk past these like, 
flowers and gardens and things on the way in. And then when I go into this building, it's like a, it's like an historical renovation with like original fixtures and artwork inside and fiddle fig trees. So there's so many things about just even the drive there and walking in that I love, let alone all of the other factors and the people that I work with, right? So I work at a restaurant, not impressive, nothing to brag about, but like I'm happy with what I do and I love going to work and I am glad about it. <clears throat> I'm grateful for my job. Now I used to work in television and film production and when I loved that, it was great. It filled me up, it made me feel motivated. I was excited to work my tail to the bone no matter how hard the job was, no matter how many hours, I could work an 18 hour day and have a great time and have this level of energy from hour one to hour 18. And when it stopped being an industry that I found fulfilling anymore, that was not the case, right? It began to drain me. So consider the, the way that you're building and creating your life now, I think that on this new timeline, in this new chapter, in this new version of our life, you know, we, we hear about like in physics string theory and it's like there's this these theories that there's like a million, like, like an infinite a number of like dimensions where we are existing doing this thing, but it gets like slightly off and slightly off and slightly different, you know? So that's kind of how the timelines are that I'm, I'm understanding that the timelines are just like the string theory, right? And we can just jump these timelines so much faster now. It once when we, okay. So the, over the last couple of years, it's like we had a major timeline shift and it was like the, the shifting of an era. And it, I, I remember like, I've talked about it as if we were watching back when there would be like videotapes and say like, Anne of, Gay Anne of Green Gables or like Braveheart, for instance, they were like such long films that you had to watch them in two videotapes. And so once you got to the end of the first tape, you'd have to like, it would say like intermission and you'd take the videotape out and you have to put the second tape in. And so this timeline jump, it was like, we had to take the whole first tape out and like put a whole new tape in. And so it also kind of reminded me of like when the earth was one big super continent, Pangea, and then the tectonic plate shifted and broke apart and the, and the continent started to drift. It's as if the energetic continents of reality have drifted and we've jumped onto this new timeline where collectively humans have become uh, more empowered manifestors. And so I think we can manifest very quickly on this timeline. I think we can generate the space to create miracles in like God will do miracles, but it's like when we make the self-sacrifice in order to create the inner, like release the energy and create the space for it. Right? So as we're co-creating this new reality, our new life, this next chapter with God, let's choose things that fill us with love. And we don't have to feel bad about that or guilty or like, oh, maybe I should do this. Like, don't go by your shoulds and coulds and woulds and duty and I'm supposed to. Like, be authentic. Be who you are, right? Your soul came here to express you uniquely. So live true to what brings you love or what, how, what you perceive love to be or beauty, what, what fills you, your heart with beauty. So in this timeline... It's like before where it would take weeks, days, months, years to shift our mindset, to have a, a revelation about something and for things maybe to shift and change in our lives. Like now it's like, oh, you go to bed and you wake up tomorrow and the, and the issue's solved, right? I went to dinner at my dad's, resolved some things with my, I felt like I had made really great progress um, with my relationship with my father. And then a three year issue with my air conditioner was resolved while I was at dinner. I was given the, the solution and it, I thought I would never get this thing fixed, right? <clears throat> so it's like that, it's like 
the more, and it's like the more we lean into love, it's like that's what makes the, the miracles happen even faster. Especially if that love is, is um, creating unity where there was division and separation. It's like when we bring unity and love and closeness and oneness within our closest uh, tribe, circle, especially our spiritual community, that surrounds us in this light of the creator that, that puts us in a miracle zone, right? It, it protects us. It gives us extra protection, extra blessing, um, abundance, flow. And when we are creating strife and division within our immediate communities, that actually cuts us off from our blessings, right? Because we're not in affinity with the light of the creator anymore. And so we're not in resonance with that energy of God, of the creator of abundance. So <clears throat> lean into love. Let love be your truth. Let love be the truth that you build from, that you create beauty in your life with. But just remember that we are in the driver's seat and we are co-creators and we can co-create very quickly. And so it's like, it's up to us though, to be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm taking the will. I'm putting on my driving goggles and I'm ready. Like, let's, let's create love. Let's create a life that we love and let's create with love. Let's be in a, in a love state of consciousness and that will be the seed level that we're planting. And so as we do that and when we plant seeds with love, it's like they're so blessed and they just, it's like they produce, they produce, they produce so much fruit. They produce so much um, uh, abundance from a seed planted with love. It creates so much more light and releases and changes things and transforms things with so much power than if we are planting seeds of doubt, insecurity, um, fear, feelings of lack, right? Those things wither and they pass away. But love is eternal. True, unconditional love, that is, that is the, the ever flowing, the outpouring of creation and love that the creator is. Awesome, so love this week. Focus on making choices that that make you, that that you love and that fill you with love, and that are heart centered and love centered, and and they come from love. Okay, what is this? Joy. Wow, fruits of the spirit this week. I love it. Fruit of loom. Got a cornucopia of virtue. So when we build a life that we love through love and from love, the result therein is joy. And that's not fluff, that's true, because I would be lying if I told you that a life that was built from love would, would always bring you happiness. Happiness is fleeting. Happiness is an ice cream cone that melts away. It's under, it's conditional. But joy is a muscle. It's a muscle that you build and joy is the capacity to be able to perceive beauty and goodness even in the midst of pain. When you can find that the humor, right, in a, in a, in a moment of suffering, like at a funeral or a wake, right, when everyone is just grieved so hard and they're so open and raw and tender and somebody just makes the right joke that just feels like salve, like, like a sweet healing salve. So joy is the capacity to remain, to hold your happiness whilst still understanding that we have to be able to hold pain in this in the other hand. So to be able to have the capacity and the complexity to hold happiness in one hand and pain in the other and be able to 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 occupy that space simultaneously, right? That's joy. It's the ability to find that reprieve within the pain, to see the light even in the midst of pain. And sometimes you're not even in pain. Sometimes joy is just pure, unadulterated joy. Sometimes you're just so happy and nothing is, nothing is amiss, nothing is awry. But when you have joy, when things do get dark, 
it's okay because that joy is still there and it's abiding and you can and you can draw from it. I feel like I have been blessed with joy in my life. I have had a very I would say chaotic and painful life in many ways. And not always because of like because I'm just like going out there being self-destructive. It's just like it's been my family's been through a lot of things. But I've always been able to be lighthearted through life. And I've always been able to be the person to lighten up the moment when we need it. And to find humor almost as a survival instinct. I know that humor can be a defense mechanism, but I think there's a little bit of a difference when it goes from defense mechanism to survival, <laughs> to survival tool. And I'm grateful for it because honestly, even like in the worst case scenarios, I've at least been able to find moments of humor and beauty and meaning within those things. So love, building that life on love and planting those seeds of love will beget joy. Okay, what is this? What do we have here? Separation. So... This is so layered to me because going into this next chapter means that we are separating ourselves. Literally, it's so funny because this, I was thinking about this card today when I was talking to my friend and she was talking about how I probably feel like I've been ripped open and gutted um, over the past year or two, a couple of years. Um, and I was like, yeah, because we were talking about how just like changing so deeply and our, our lives have changed so much and we've had to let go of so much and so many, you know, taking so many unexpected hits. And you're just like, what, what, what? Oh my gosh. Like, when is it going to like, <laughs> when's something going to give, right? But it's been in the process of shedding that old self, taking myself, tearing apart the ego self, the small self that takes things personally, that's victimized, that is weak, that's not strong enough to face this moment, the, the part of me that causes the suffering and the, the part of me that's, that judges, that has criticism, that's uh, disgruntled, you know, um, angsty, that part of me, that, that immature, childish part, the selfish part, the self-centered part of me, I want to tear that away. And I want to get to the heart, my true heart, right? And be of one mind. And so I have to separate myself from that lower self, that that small way of thinking, that selfish, uh, flesh-centered consciousness, uh, and move towards um, that higher self that I'm, that we've all been connecting with over the past well, however long you've been doing the work, but I feel like we've been really concentrated in that over the last couple of years. And particularly in recent weeks, we've been thinking, okay, and like approaching the work as if we are drawing upon that future self and we are like borrowing that light from that self and we are integrating it. We are pulling it into this vessel and we are solidifying that as our current mentality, our current consciousness, our current capacity, our current identity. And so this might literally look like things that you're separating yourself from in your life. Um, if this might be people who are uh, making an exit from your day to day. Um, you might be moving on. If you're changing jobs or moving, uh, sometimes that's more obvious, right? But it's more subtle when you're leaving behind old habitual ways of thinking or approaching matters and situations. But either way, so we're separating from the old way, the old timeline, right? The Pangea continent is breaking apart. And the, uh, the other timeline people that can't move forward are stuck on that old continent. They are this part that's being separated and cut away. And so the, the people that can't adjust, they can't move forward, they can't get that revelation, they can't transcend, they can't evolve, it's like they're just naturally going to like peel away 
right? Or they just won't be like in your awareness. Like they might even be in your same space, but it's just like they're not even going to be, it's like there's going to be a veil just drawn, right? So very interesting. All right. Any other cards that we don't know? Let's get one more. Wow, what a week. Um, hunt. Amazing. So now that we are like, full of joy, full of love. We have like something that we want to aim at, uh, something like at least an idea or a vision of what we want our life to become. And now that we're drawing in that future self, that higher self that already knows how to achieve that timeline and we're all pumped uh, with joy and with love and we are empowered by that joy and love and we're supported by that joy and love. Now it's time to put that energy into the hunt, into going after what you desire. That is an active desire that's been activated. And it's like we're willing to go through the discomfort, make an effort, um, put aside our smaller will or our idea of how, how it, whatever should be falling into place or the, this, the, you know, we should have this or this and that. And don't worry about it. Just focus on joy and love separating from the old ways that would inhibit you or self-sabotage. They're going to be coming up, right? Those little voices the, of hindrance and self-sabotage and self-defeatism, they're, they're going to be still whispering in the background, but we're, we're seeing those and we're separate. We're seeing them to identify them so that we can separate from that tendency. And we are determining within ourselves to make an effort to move in practical, attainable steps forward. Give yourself attainable things that you can do that give you a feeling of the feeling of victory, the satisfaction of victory and accomplishment. And that gives you more motivation to then do more the next day and the next day and the next day. But it's going to be something that we can't wait for a feeling of inspiration and motivation to come over us. We have to take it upon ourselves to create this, this feeling within ourselves. So think about like, I think about this all the time, especially if I'm hungry, how in the hunting and gathering ages, before we could just go to the store and get some food or go to a drive through like you'd have to like get up with your energy and hunt down a large land beast and kill that thing and then take a blade and rip it open and gut it and fill dress it and then haul the carcass back to camp and then butcher it. And then after that, find firewood and do a friction thing until you like create a fire. Like the amount of energy one would have to exert, I would have just laid there and starved. Like honestly, I would have just been like, can I eat this grass? Like, I don't know, it's just a lot, you know? So like you have to like really draw from your inner strength to go out and hunt. Think about like when, you know, they would go through periods where they, they wouldn't find anything to hunt, right? And they would have to, you know, continue on starving and tired. So no matter how starving and tired you are right now, let that be the motivation to create an active desire to go after whatever it is that you want. I mean, I know that this can be daunting because I think about now, my, my own self. I'm like, I've put so much effort into the things that I wanna make come true in my life. And when I think about like finishing my, my uh, Oracle deck and publishing that and then like books and things that I wanna write, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, there's so much involved in doing this and making it a success. It's like, I mean, some people have like a whole publishing company behind them with like teams of people to do this. And so it's like the, the thought of like summoning that energy, you know, you've really got to dig deep. I remember like there were 
like I've wanted to be a director in time, like during my earlier days. And what, like while I was deciding if I wanted to leave film, because I kept having this urge that I wanted to, to talk about spiritual things to people and, and teach people and, and, and do this. Um, it was always the most compelling thing. Like I wasn't thinking in my mind like, oh yeah, I want to be a tarot reader and a coach and all that. But like, I just like, I felt like this draw to come this way. And when I thought about, because I thought about, okay, if I'm doing this, like, what did I want to do with film? I wanted to like send these messages, you know, into the world and make statements through my films, right? Well, how long, how many years does it take to write a script and get it funded? And all of the constant, like every day, your whole day, your whole life, you eat, sleep, breathe, dream, getting this film made from the time it's like an idea, you write it, you get that script sold, you get it produced, you gotta like, ca like cast the movie, crew the movie, fund the movie, get insurance for the movie, get all the location. Like, it's like, it's never ending. It's like such a thing. And then you're there in pre-production, right? 12 hours or more a day. And you're on set 12 hours more a day. And I'm just like, I don't have the energy for that hunt. And then you've got to promote the film and get it into like, that's like, <laughs> no one's even seen it yet. And you've got to take it to like film festivals and hope somebody will even watch it. You know, and then you've got to get it sold and distributed. <laughs> it's like, and then people are like, this was a box office failure. And you're just like, this is my whole life. <laughs> right? <laughs> and honestly, I was just like, you know what? I don't have the energy for all that. Like nobody, what if they watch the movie, best case scenario? And like, what if they don't even get the message? Like, I'm like, I can just make a video that's shitty quality put it out there, people will see it, and like I can just say what I wanted to say. <laughs> and it doesn't take 10 years, right? Like Dirty Dancing, I think, sat unmade for like 10 years before it ever even got off the ground. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, ah. Uh. So you really have to like have a passion and a calling to do, to create, to hunt in this life. That's that active desire. So that's why it's important that we, we connect with that soul, like that soul yearning, that soul passion, that calling and that, and stay connected with the big why, why we're doing something. What is it that we're trying to share with the world through doing this? Because it, we have to have something to keep us motivated to keep hunting, right? Otherwise we get tired. <laughs> we just lay there and eat the grass that's next to us, right? So we got to keep our motivation up. Let's cut the deck and see what's in the middle here. Ah, this has been with us for weeks. The sacral chakra, you guys. So to get motivated, we need to like give some love to our sacral chakra. We've still been in the sacral chakra. We've been overcoming things in our subconscious and subconscious programming. We've been overcoming like shame and guilt that we might've been carrying around since childhood. And we're offloading that because then that will give us a creative surge. Our creative blocks are here as well because this is where our imagination is. This is where like our body creates human beings. Like this is a very, very highly charged, highly active, lots of coming and going here, a center for activity and imagination. So in order to enhance your efforts this week and get in touch with your vision. I would say can, we, we need to continue to do healing in the sacral chakra area. Um, this also affects our appetites and whether or not we can balance those appetites. You know, this might lead to lust or gluttony here if we have some imbalances. So that might help. And harmony. Finding harmony through that. Amazing. Okay, you guys. Um, as far as sacral chakra healing, like the water element is something that the sacral chakra is connected to. So intentional um, meditation and prayer on things while you're in like a ritual bath would be good. Or like 
uh, taking a, like a mikvah or a baptism in natural water, purification there, um, emotionally purging um, those things through, um, eating orange foods, working with the color orange, wearing the color orange, surrounding yourself with the color orange. Uh, you know, and just, you know, do some extra research, maybe just look up like some good ways to um, charge or like, it, like an energy healing towards this, the sacral chakra, like methods for that and common practices. <sighs> All right, you guys, well, I'm a tired little baby and yeah we'll be back tomorrow for our weekly anchor message where we will be getting our spiritual assignments for the week and the lessons and the work that we will be doing throughout this lovely joyous week where we are separating from that lower self we are getting to the heart of it we're getting into our heart of hearts and we're getting really motivated to go after what we desire and what we dream of for ourselves, And we're determined to do it. We've got drawing from our inner strength. All right, you all. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.